When I first got started in tech, there was no like step-by-step -step process for me to follow. I had to like randomly research about the CCNA and find out about that and everything. And definitely you could check out my story if you don't know it of how I got into IT or how I begun my journey and everything. But there just wasn't a clear path for me. And that's what I wanted to do with this video. Just hopefully by sharing some of the challenges that I faced I, I could hopefully make it smoother for you um, before you even start studying for the CCNA. So this is for any of the beginners out there that are just curious, trying to get their foot in the door and just want like a structured, simple, easy to follow kind of guide that they can refer to from time to time to make sure that they're just, it's like a simple little blueprint to just make sure that you're just on the right path toward becoming a CCNA and working in the NOC or working as a network administrator, network analyst, all these different terms to just be working in IT period. Uh, specifically though, um, with networking and Cisco equipment, this video should help. I'm gonna be sharing the challenges and what I've learned to overcome all of those challenges and to put together, again, just like a little starter pack, just to get you started that way you can gain some momentum and then when you go to really study and you got some kind of structure and you already know what kind of stuff that you're gonna be facing and what you're gonna to have to go through in order to reach your goal. So make sure to hang around if that's something that you feel is interesting and I just wanna say I appreciate everybody again for all the new subscribers that have been tapping in and definitely for everybody that's already subscribed, I appreciate that. Make sure to um, definitely thumbs up the video and share it and everything if you like this content or you know somebody that might want to hear this content and definitely subscribe if you're not subscribed because every week I'm going to be sharing videos just like this anything from tech tutorials career advice you know everything about personal development everything that I can share from um, my experience working in the IT industry all right the first thing I'm going to discuss is just talking about just learning the basics learning the fundamentals if you're subscribed to me you know that in my videos several different videos I mentioned uh, the importance of fundamentals and that's because I'm a network engineer now and um, any network engineer my peers and everything that I know they all have to resort back to the fundamentals as well as um, that's what separates really um, a good network engineer from somebody that's not as good of a network engineer. I've worked with so many and what's really stood out to me is that when there is a super complex issue and you're trying to isolate um, the network and everything from being part or contributing to the whatever kind of issue that's going on, what, what mainly happens is uh, more often than not is that the engineer or whoever's resolving that trouble when they're breaking it down they're gonna have to go back to their fundamentals because number one you're gonna have to communicate to another team maybe somebody on the server team of why the network isn't having an issue and if it's something so complex like a complex networking concept or topic or something you're not gonna be able to break that down to somebody if you're talking at such a high level. You need to get down to a fundamental level and just be like, look, this is how this works and explain it like that at a really basic level, easy to understand level. So that's why it's so important to not skip over these things. So when I first started, I didn't know anything about learning the basics. I was just trying to get as much information as I could to hurry up and get to that six, fig six figure salary. You feel me? I was just trying to, I didn't care about saying oh okay um subnetting this is one of the fundamentals i was just like subnetting this is something i got to learn to get this certification i just want the cert so i could get the salary now looking back on that um a different approach would be uh to really drill down and learn the fundamentals because that's really what you're going to use when you get into um into your networking career subnetting is going to be a big part of it you're going to have to know how a subnet works, what a, what is a subnet and everything like that because you're gonna come across that pretty much on a daily basis and you're gonna have to understand that. You're gonna have to understand the OSI model in depth. You, you need to learn how to work with it. More than just understanding the layers uh, of it, try to put it into some kind of framework for you to understand like the physical layer. You just gotta understand that that's gonna have to do with power and, and physical things that 
you can, you know, that you can touch and everything like cabling and all these different kind of things. And then just take it a step further. Don't just learn about the layers of the OSI model. Look into the commands, the best commands to troubleshoot at each of the layers. Those are things that I would do now that I didn't do before. Before I was just learning that, you know, uh, the mnemonic, all people seem to need data processing. Just trying to learn it just to pass the certification. So that's what I'm trying to stress with this first point that I'm making is that instead of just trying to get the cert to get to the six figure tech job or whatever, try to focus more on the basics, whatever the basics may be. OSI model, like I said, uh, TCP versus UDP. Understanding these core fundamentals levels will build your skills to where you're going to be able to just get that six figure job very easily once you do obtain your CCNA and you do get some kind of experience under your belt. You'll be able to go more confidently into them interviews when you're trying to get them six figures. Hopefully all of that made sense. Next, I want to talk about practicing your skills and everything. So it's one thing to sit there and study the theory and everything that's all well and good you know how to subnet you know everything there is to know all the different definitions all the different acronyms you got all of that kind of stuff down pat but you need to practice these skills um on a daily basis you need to carve out some time get some scheduling you need to practice it by labbing up all of these different kind of labs do configuring this is what you're going to be doing in your career anyways so you're not going to want to set up a small little network and all of these kind of things in packet tracer right um but you're going to have to in the real world you're going to have to configure an ip address for more than one interface it's just going to be part of your daily routine so you might as well just get used to it it's just like anything just like working out it's going to require discipline it's doing something that you don't want to do um to get the things that you really do want and just being able to do those things that you don't want to do those are the things that you actually do want to do because you wouldn't be going after this goal of a CCNA if you didn't want to configure an IP address so that's the kind of mindset that you got to have just have that mindset that you're you're already doing the job by doing these labs and again the best thing if you're just starting out and you really don't understand anything about networking or labbing up equipment the best thing is to get your hands on some real world equipment that's what i would suggest is get yourself on some real world equipment again it's just going to get you more involved with being in the real world by having a console into some equipment but not everybody can afford that um or not everybody can get their hands on that equipment or may not have uh, the resources to be able to do that. So the next best thing would be to get packet tracer. Um, when I first started, I got on real life equipment. Um, that was just the way that I was able to do it. But um, packet tracer is just as good because it is simulation software. So you're not going to have to do anything like with GNS3 and get the actual image because that's the difference between packet tracer and the GNS3. GNS3 is emulation software, meaning it's emulating what a router would be doing. So you actually need the actual image on there or the software or the iOS, whatever you want to call it. You need that to be able to work in GNS3. As a beginner, that's way too much working with the image and getting all this. It's just too much wasted time. I tried it when I, when I first started out and I thought that would be the easiest route, but Packet Tracer is definitely enough. It, it, it just simulates the network and it lets you just get in there and get your hands on training quickly and easily. So definitely add that to your starter pack by just practicing, setting out some kind of schedule. Um, if you want me to put a schedule together or something of what a beginner to do uh, should be doing as far as labbing on a weekly basis, um, I could put together a study plan. Just drop it in the comments and let me know. Finally, the last thing that we're going to talk about is projects that I feel that was something that nobody ever told me. I think that's a good way you could build up your resume with projects um, and you just build up your skills with projects and it just helps put everything together because it's not just doing labs, which is something that 
maybe somebody else created, right? These packet tracer labs. Uh, maybe you got it from your school or maybe you found it online or something, but these are labs that other people put together. When I say do project work, put your own lab together. Pretend that you're setting up an office for some major corporation and put a router up, uh, put some switches up, put some PCs up and start building out a network and uh, of a small office or maybe a large office that's a, connected across the internet. These kind of projects, this is what's going to make you start thinking because you're going to need to know what kind of cable you need to use to make these devices work. Is it straight through or crossover? Um, you're going to have to configure all of the parts of it. You're going to have to design it and implement it. And these projects, that's where you can definitely put that kind of stuff on your resume, even though it isn't production equipment, you have worked in non-production environments and you can speak intelligently about that if you take the time to really build out your own labs, which is a project in and itself. Hopefully all of that information that I provided helps out somebody out there that's trying to get started or maybe curious and just wants a step-by-step -step process. There's definitely a million other things that you can do. You can reference websites and all these different kind of things. Um, I just listed a few here again because I'm just not trying to waste anybody's time but at the end of the day no matter how many options I give you how many steps I give you how many guides how many blueprints blase squaze whatever the case may be it really doesn't matter it's really boils down to the individual the person you are and if you really want this stuff or not it's gonna boil down to you taking that first step and then just going out there and researching using YouTube um, to learn the basics right and going to a channel like Jeremy's IT lab or Keith Barker just to name some of those few uh, YouTube channels to learn the basics from again hopefully you found some kind of information in this video useful um, that it's enough to share with somebody maybe uh, that you're trying to learn with or that may need to hear this content and definitely subscribe to the channel if you want to see more content like this and thumbs up the video if you liked it definitely leave a comment for me let me know what you like what you didn't like what you want to see more of or anything that you want to chat about just holla at me in the comments and i will catch y'all on that next video holla at me peace